Well, it is time to transplant the seedlings from the grow lights to the earth boxes and wicking tubs. So let's get after it. As many of you know, the earth boxes, um, if you're going to plant two plants in it, you have to put the fertilizer row on one side of it, one down one side. So that's what I'm doing is making a trench here for the fertilizer. In this case, I'm using, uh, it's a Haas Organic Complete Fertilizer. The uh, NPK ratio is 5-4-3. Earthbox says if you're going to use a commercial fertilizer, you use one pound, and, uh, which is two cups. Uh, but it says if you're going to use an organic fertilizer, to use uh, three cups. So in this case, since this is 5-4-3, I want the middle numbers to be a little higher for tomatoes and peppers and things like that. So I'm going to add, this is what this is, is just a straight phosphorus. I think it's... Uh, 0380 or something like that. I got that off Amazon. I'll put a link to that below. And that bumps this 543 up considerably in the middle number. I, I did the math and I can't tell you exactly what it's going to be right now, but it bumped it up to where I like it to have a good middle number. And um, so we're putting three cups total, two and a half cups of the organic and then a half a cup of the um, phosphorus down the uh, side of that in a trench and then you cover it up. Last year I had a lot of problems with blossom end rot and I said this year I was not going to do that. Well. Travis at Haas Tools suggested the, uh, their pelletized gypsum. So I'm adding about a half a cup of pelletized gypsum and about uh, a tablespoon, maybe a little more than that, of Epsom salts. I always like to plant Epsom salts with, uh, with tomatoes, especially tomatoes, but I, I use it on peppers too. And I put about a tablespoon or so of Epsom salt and uh, placing that kind of in the hole where I'm going to be putting the tomatoes. But also, just kind of spread it out evenly, mix it in with the soil. That pelletized gypsum will just about assure that I don't have any blossom end rot this year. I may have to add some more later. Um, but blossom end rot is probably going to be a thing of the past. So I'm going to top this earth box off with the uh, potting soil that I'm using, which is a Berger uh, BM7. You're supposed to round, mound it up on top, kind of round the tops of these earth boxes off uh, to because you're going to have a cover on it, and it allows that uh, cover to shed water better if the uh, if it's got a mound on top of it. So these are my tomatoes I'm going to be putting in there. I have to, uh, first of all, put the bonnet on, the cover. This is a mulch cover, weed cover. It does several things. It keeps the rain from washing the fertilizer out from through the bottom. It also keeps weed seeds out uh, and just really does a good job when you're, when you're planting your vegetables in the earth boxes. There's a smart design, smart idea. Cut some X's in the cover to put these plants. Problem is these plants are big. They're in solo cups. They're not just in a little six pack or something. They are big. So I've got to kind of stretch out. Got to kind of stretch out those little cuts there. And to do that, uh, I figured out a better way to do that was to uh, take the cover off dig out a big hole with my hands and then replace the cover. I tried it like this, like you're supposed to. It just didn't seem like it was going to work. That's the way you're supposed to do it. If you got a smaller plant, you just dig it out with your hand 
and then you put the, the plant down in it. But I decided to do it this way because I have just got a huge plant, a huge root system in that solo cup. So I made a big hole on both sides in preparation of the solo cup root ball of these tomato plants. I believe these are red snapper tomato plants from Haas Tools. Got the seed from Haas Tools and started them myself. That is a good looking tomato plant. Kind of mound the soil up without hurting the tomato. Make sure it's packed real good around that root ball. Going to do the same thing here. Dig down, make a bigger hole to accept that solo cup. Again, if it wasn't a solo cup, if it wasn't a huge root ball, I would just stick my fingers down in the, the cover and wallow out a hole like that. Got a lot of roots. You can see the root system. I've got like using the clear solo cups because you can see the roots. Uh, you can see when they really start making roots, it's evident because the, clip, the cup is clear. So I mark it with an old piece of Venetian blind like I've shown you before. Just the old plastic Venetian blind. I love to use those for markers. And it's obvious that the wind is blowing pretty hard and I think I need to stake them. So this is a little tool I showed you last year. It's a tape tying tool, and um, I just love this little thing. Uh, you've got to be careful. You can, as you're using it, you can uh, cut your plant if you're not careful. But it picks up the tape. You wrap it around and make sure you're getting on the other side. Make sure you're getting far away from that plant before you clamp down on it and staple it. I'll show you a close-up of it in just a minute. And this plant was so tall, I decided I had to put three of them in there. And again, you'll notice I am being very careful so as not to crush that stem when I clamp down on it right there. I have to make sure I'm on the other side of that stem and then staple it. And look at that. That just does an amazing job, quick and easy. I love this little tool. So here's a close-up of the tying that this, uh, this machine does. The last time I looked, Amazon was out of this brand, but they had several other brands, so I will link to some of these tape tying machines below. You'll see it puts a staple in it. It ties it, wraps around it, and then puts that staple in it to hold it. And I found when I did my blackberries last year, those those tapes lasted months and months and months on my blackberries. So, uh, I mean, even in the heat of the summer, most of that tape was still there. In earth box, or as, as in anything you do, whether you're planting in the ground or in wicking tubs, containers, earth bags, whatever, uh, you want to make sure you water those plants in as soon as you plant them. And this is just regular water. But I'm also using some micro boost. I get that from Haas Tools. It's kind of a syrupy, almost like a molasses looking um, micro, uh, micronutrient. It's got all the, all the micronutrients your plants need. And I'm putting a tablespoon, about a half, not quite a tablespoon, down in the hole of the earth box. I do the same. That's a one and a half tablespoon miracle Grow measure. But I put about a tablespoon down the hole. The earth box holds about three gallons of water. So it was one tablespoon to three gallons of water. I don't think that's mixing it too, too, uh, too hot. And I'll just go ahead and do that with each and every one of them. Like I say, I do that also on my wicking tubs. These are my wicking tubs. These are the hybrid wicking, wicking tubs that I kind of came up with. And uh, I, one on the the tomato on the right is a mountain vineyard. The tomato on the left is a pink brandy wine. 
These are indeterminate. They'll get real tall, so I planted them in wicking tubs so I can put a tomato cage right in the center of that wicking tub and let those tomatoes grow up five, six feet tall. These are probably going to get Florida weave or get some smaller cages on them. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with, uh, with the earth boxes yet. I made some cages last year out of, out of my regular tomato cages. I made some cages that would fit around these earth boxes uh, in this oblong shape. And I'll show you those later on. I came back and tied almost all of these tomatoes because the wind just got worse and worse. So all of them wound up with that orange tag on them there, which is that tape. Didn't want to take a chance on them getting broke off by the wind. So that's a look at it. And uh, again, planting tomatoes in earth boxes like this, you plant the same way in a wicking tub, plant the same way in an earth bag. Uh, you don't have the cover, the white cover on it necessarily but you'll, uh, you'll plant the exact same way. I'm a big fan of container gardening. Uh, they did so well for me last year. I grew up so much produce. I was giving away, we were canning, freezing, giving away. I know I gave away 10 bushels of just squash last year and tons of tomatoes out of containers. Now I plant corn and peas and things like that in uh, potatoes and such like that out in the garden. But for tomatoes and peppers and such, I'm kind of partial to containers. So you ought to give it a try. Containers, earth boxes are great, wicking tubs, grow bags, all these things do well. And I found that I didn't have a problem with any of them last year. So all right, that's it. We've got them planted, waiting on the sunshine, waiting on those Minerals to kick in, waiting for the fertilizer to kick in. So we're gone.